All right. Um, um, Representative Hamilton, you're on. You got the A1, A2, A3. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll move the A1 amendment. All right. And Representative Hamilton moves the A1. And I think these might be in a different spot in the packet. Oh, are they? Oh, they're on the top. Mm -hmm. I don't have them. Okay. Does everyone have those? Yep. Okay. All right. Everyone but me. Okay. All right. To the A1, Representative Hamilton. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And you know, I think back <laughs> when we first put this in into law, worked very closely with the author then, former Representative Carly Moline. And, uh, you know, the testimony around that was pretty compelling. But after that went into law, I did my due diligence as well. And I w actually toured uh, one of the manufacturing facilities. And I went through that. And I would encourage everybody to do that. And I was extremely impressed with what I saw um, between the uh, professionalism from everybody that worked there, the safety, the security, and also uh, visited some dispensaries. And, um, Madam Speaker, again, I would encourage everybody to do that. Uh, what the A1 amendment does, you can see under qualifying medical conditions, if you turn to the second page, line 2.3 and 2.4, uh, what it says is any condition for which an opioid, an opiate uh, could otherwise be prescribed, and then second line, chronic pain or intractable pain. We've heard a lot of testimony around um, uh, the horror stories and the abuse and addiction on opiates. And so, uh, Madam Chair, I would simply like to say if, uh, an individual is able to or receives a prescription for uh, uh, that course of action that it also qualify for um, medicinal cannabis and ask for your support. All right. Thank you, Representative Hamilton. Discussion? Representative Munson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and Representative Hamilton for bringing this forward. Uh, I am supportive of the, uh, the, of the uh, program today. Um, I just have a question on line 2.3 where it says, any condition for which an opiate could be otherwise prescribed, um, is there a list, is there a specific list of conditions for which opiates can be subscribed, uh, prescribed, or can a doctor in his own uh, determination decide how much pain someone's in and for anything to prescribe it? I mean, doesn't this just open it up for every, every condition? Representative Hamilton. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and Representative Munson. Um, this would be on, uh, under the doctor's guidance and discretion. Um, and it offer the doctor uh, additional flexibility as far as treatments for his patients or hers. Okay, and Represent Munson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and I guess as a follow-up, there's, I mean, by, by process of elimination, there's the world's worst doctor out there somewhere. And uh, he probably does, you know, internet visits. So I, I'm just thinking that if, if, if there's a doctor out there that's willing to prescribe, <laughs> to prescribe, you know, over the internet or uh, online that, um, I, I just, I'm just wondering if it doesn't just open it up for, for, for every single condition. Um, but I, I do like the idea of having an alternative for opiates. So, um, you know, I have concerns over that line, and, uh, but I am otherwise supportive. Thank you. All right. Representative Halverson and then Baker. Representative Halverson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I had a similar question with regard to any condition because there are many um, acute uh, conditions that uh, opioids are prescribed for. I'm thinking tooth extractions or, um, you know, injuries or uh, surgery where we've done a lot of work about um, changing uh, prescribing behavior so that they're, they're short-term prescriptions. We're not getting 30-day supplies anymore. So I think it's four to seven days that those prescriptions are being written for. And is the, is the intention to include those kind of conditions, the ac acute conditions, or just chronic conditions? for which opiates would be prescribed. Representative Hamilton. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I think that um, goes on to lines 2.4 when it says chronic pain or in intractable pain. I wonder if that doesn't answer your question. Representative Hamilton. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, if, if that's the intent, it might make some sense to um, clarify that it would be a chronic condition as opposed to any condition um, because um, it, it, there could be just endless acute conditions that that would fit into that, and I'm not sure if that's the intent. It doesn't sound like it because it sounds like, uh, per uh, Representative Hamilton's reference to chronic or intractable pain, those are indeed chronic and long-term treatments with opioids. And Madam Chair, 
Madam Chair. Representative Pam. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think that would be a friendly amendment. It helped clarify this as well. Okay, so what was the amendment, Representative Halverson? Madam you? Chair, um, after the word any, uh, add the word chronic. On line 2.3. Okay. Okay, so um, Representative, uh, I think since it's a clarifying amendment and it's a word, I think we could add it. And uh, so the, the motion would be to, um, actually, I think Representative Hamilton, you could probably incorporate that into your amendment if you chose to, so the word after, on line 2.3, after the word any, insert the word chronic. Would that be your desire to incorporate that into your amendment, Representative Hamilton? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, would. Okay, Representative Munson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I guess uh, I may sound uh, contradictory, but um, I, <laughs> I, I, I like the idea of substituting the option of medical uh, cannabis as opposed to an opiate. And if there is a condition for which someone does not have uh, long-term pain, I think it's, uh, I, I think that it, it should leave the door open for something that some acute pain to give them temporary relief um, that it doesn't have to be chronic. Otherwise, you could strike the entire line and just use what's there on 2.4, which says chronic pain. Uh, well, what do members want to do, Representative Hamilton? Do you want to respond? Or you want to, should we uh, vote on the amendment as, as with the incorporated word, Representative Hamilton? Um, it's your amendment. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'm, you know, I, I guess I'm happy with the way it is. I'd, if uh, others would like to go back to the original language, I'd like to hear from them. Um, I'll leave it at that. Okay, right. Representative Baker. You know, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I'm just speaking to support this because, again, I've done a lot of, of uh, looking into the mm. medical cannabis and how this is, should be dealt with. I haven't heard a lot of people actually dying from taking some medical cannabis, and I think this is an important component. I really see it as a chronic pain, however, and I kind of like the Halverson help on the on this amendment to kind of make it chronic. I think both uh, Representative Munson and we're all trying to get to the same thing. This isn't intended, I don't think, for acute pain. This has got to be, um, and again, short-term opioid use is not a problem when it's really tightly prescribed. Uh, I just wanted to stand up and support this because I think there's there, we're moving in that direction for some other pain options without it being opioid. So. Uh, with, with the either language, I'm supportive of the bill. So thank you. All right, Representative Bierman. Um, I would just say go back to the original. I think there might be some conditions where there's not chronic pain, but where opioids may be prescribed, where medical cannabis might fit the bill better for some individuals, and it should be open to the doctor and the patient. All right, well, Representative Hamilton, it's your amendment. I mean, I guess we could have voted on adding the word chronic, but it's, uh, you know, if you wanted to incorporate it, it's fine. If you want it out, it's fine. It's your decision. Uh, Madam Chair, I think I'm going to uh, um, leave it as is. If someone would like to make the motion to take it back out, I mean, leave it with the word chronic in there. If uh, someone would like to make a motion to remove that word, I'm more than happy to have that debate. But um, again, I, I think um, I feel more comfortable after hearing the discussion earlier that uh, I'd like to keep that word in there. All right. All right. I'm not seeing anybody leaping to make a motion to remove that. So I think that the, uh, we, the amendment is before us with uh, that addition in it. So line 2.3 says any chronic condition for which an opiate could otherwise be prescribed. Um, any other discussion to the bill with the addition? All right. Uh, Yeah, so, um, so, uh, and um, so Representative Hamilton, um, thank you for this. I, I support this. I agree with uh, some of the comments that have been said here. I don't know if um, anyone else wants to make a, wants to say anything about it, but uh, I would support the amendment. Mm -hmm. um, all those in favor of the A1 with the uh, incorporation of the word chronic, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. No, no, I don't. I think we're on the A2, Representative Hamilton. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move the A2 amendment. And uh, as you can see, members, under the qualifying medical conditions, 
Uh, what the A2 amendment does, um, on lines 1.7, you can see um, uh, cancer is a qualifying condition. Uh, however, it did list additional things that the individual who does have cancer would also have to be suffering from. And uh, so what this amendment does is it strikes out those additional conditions. Same with um, on lines 1.20 under terminal illness. Not only did they have to have a terminal illness, but they had to have other conditions um, in addition to a terminal illness to, uh, to qualify for this. And so again, as you can see for yourself there on the, uh, on the amendment, it um, leaves the word cancer on lines 1.7 and terminal illness on lines 1.20, but strikes out the additional qualifiers in order for them to be uh, uh, eligible for the use of medicinal cannabis. And I ask for your support. All right, um, discussion to the amendment, Representative Cantrell. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Hamilton, for bringing this amendment. I really think it is a, a very good amendment, um, and I urge uh, members to support. All right, further discussion? All right, seeing none, um, and uh, Representative Hamilton, again, I, I think this, you know, to me personally, this seems, you know, like a, like a good addition to the bill. Appreciate your bringing it. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. The motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. And uh, finally, A3, Representative Hamilton. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move the A3 amendment. And members, as you can see on lines 1.11, one, 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 um, we add the words, or there's um, some words stricken there. Uh, which did at one time uh, prohibit the dry le dried leaves of the plants. Um, this strikes that language and adds in raw cannabis. And my reasoning behind this, Madam Chair, and members of the committee, like I said, when, when I went out and uh, toured the facilities, not only that, I received a prescription. And uh, I haven't been able to get it filled yet. I, I think I uh, shared that story with everybody. But I had a little bit of sticker shock myself. And uh, the price tag on this, it's not cheap. And right now you have uh, pill form or uh, vapor or oil. Um, and it, it goes through uh, pretty extensive um, in the lab. It's, it's quite impressive what it goes through uh, in order to get into that form. And with that, it does raise the cost or drive the cost. And so um, I'm, uh, I guess what I've said, it's, it's more of a, um, it prohibits individuals or uh, discourages in individuals who have uh, more limited means, if you will, uh, to be able to access this treatment. And um, other states have uh, moved um, the, uh, the flower form, and it has shown positive results as far as lowering cost. And so um, it would still fall under the, the same qualifying medical conditions and, and everything else. It, would, it is uh, meant to deliver it in another form to help reduce the cost um, and make it accessible again to people with limited means. And I ask for your support, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Hamilton. Is there discussion? Representative Grunhagen. Oh, hi. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Hamilton, does this include vaping? Representative Hamilton. Uh, Madam Chair, I believe uh, um, vaping is uh, in the, the vaping form is uh, currently a form that's uh, that you can use. Vape. Vapor, pill, and oil, I believe, are the three current uses that are eligible. And I will be, I'll stand corrected if somebody would like to contradict that. Right. And Representative Grunhagen, if you look at the rest of the existing language, <laughs> yeah, it I, still I, wouldn't be able, you still wouldn't be able to right smoke here. it. Yeah, and that so, was my concern of vaping. So I think vaping is what I, I, I unless somebody here can testify to it, I, I think that uh, it would be a matter of if raw cannabis was used, it would be to vape it. So you could just do it directly. So um, members, is, are there further questions or comments to this? Ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Representative Zerwas? <coughs> oh, thank you, Madam Chair and uh, members and um, to Representative Hamilton for bringing the bill forward. Um, Representative Hamilton mentioned uh, earlier some of the uh, stakeholders that came together in passing the, the initial language, and um, certainly Representative 
former Representative Moline, Representative Garofalo, um, Representative Hamilton, myself, um, and others. And then there was other discussions with a lot of uh, stakeholder groups in order to get this passed. This was, at the time, kind of controversial. Uh, and in order to get uh, law enforcement to kind of remain neutral uh, and others, one of the big negotiating points was the uh, pro prohibition of, of plant uh, material uh, in that process. Um, I think a few years into the program, this would be a significant change uh, from that and from kind of that negotiated process that it took to pass uh, the legislation in the first place. Um, I understand the, the cost challenges, and we have two uh, we have two providers here, and I think there are instances uh, uh, where I think there's a, a potential as the program grows and uh, as the qualifying conditions, uh, of, you know, like the two amendments we just passed, <laughs> grows. Um, I think there's other things being done that could um, tackle some of the, the, the cost challenges in that as we get things kind of to scale um, and kind of the, the supply and demand aspect of it. But uh, <clears throat> as much as I don't like going against uh, my friend Representative Hamilton, mainly because nine times out of ten he wins. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I have to oppose the, the A3 amendment uh, at this time because I think it is just a bridge too far uh, from the negotiated agreement that that we arrived at as a legislature um, with some of the external uh, stakeholders when this was first uh, passed. You know, there's there's several bills going forward around full legalization or a, a task force to look at uh, potential legalization or kind of a whole host of, of, of issues being discussed. Um, I'm wondering if... Um, now, this would be a pretty significant change to the medical cannabis program um, as it's being implemented in Minnesota. I'm wondering if there's an appetite or an interest later in the process uh, to, to work together on an amendment that talks about looking into this or studying it. Um, but I think just to make um, the change now in, in a bill that you know hasn't gone through the process, hasn't been heard, um, I don't think it's moving through the other uh, body. Um, I just think it's, we had a lot of work and a lot of negotiations and getting the pretty wide, diverse group of, of, of groups, uh, at least neutral, with the medical cannabis program several years ago when it was passed in a law. And um, I, I'm hesitant at this point, I guess, to, to rock the boat on that. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, Representative Halverson. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. And while we didn't hear testimony in committee uh, about this, we actually did have a meeting of the Medical Cannabis Task Force uh, earlier in the year and heard some really compelling testimony about accessibility issues, um, particularly around cost, um, and heard um, uh, about um, finding uh, additional um, delivery methods. Um, now, this uh, is not a, a wide change because it continues um, a, a delivery method that's already in place that we discussed, the, the vaporized delivery method, um, and it just adds one form of, of the, the um, cannabis. And so I don't think it's, it's a, a big change with regard to um, expanding or somehow renegotiating what we uh, talked about as a legislature. But I do, uh, it is very clear, I think, based on the testimony we heard in the task force that it would have a big impact on uh, cost and accessibility. And I think we all want um, people to be able to utilize the program and um, not have to, uh, these, these folks, these moms and dads, they don't want to go on the street and have a dealer. They want to use the medical cannabis program. And I think that this would help that Thank you. access. Representative Munson. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, Representative Hamilton. Uh, thanks for bringing this forward. I, I think it's, uh, I, I'm sure this has been tackled somewhere else in policy committees than I, uh, so I don't want to get into it too far here, but 
Um, you know, I witnessed my father dying of pancreatic cancer, and uh, he, he used medical cannabis for the last year and of his life, and, and it was really helpful in reducing his opiate intake and uh, covering a lot of the, you know, masking a lot of the pain and helping him with nausea and stuff. I think it was really good. Um, I know that he used the vaporizer with oil and uh, had real difficulty trying to throttle the amount uh, he was taking. And I think from testimony I've heard elsewhere that the, using a raw cannabis allows them to take a smaller amount, right? And so it's, I think that's good. Um, but uh, as far as setting up a new material like this, is there already the tax and regulatory structure in place uh, for raw cannabis? Or is that something that needs to be worked out once this, if this was adopted? I'm sorry, was there, do, um, you want testimony? Yeah. Madam please. Chair, is it okay if I have a testifier answer Sure, that absolutely. Welcome to the committee. Please give us your name. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Curtis Hanna, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, there, I believe, would be uh, a need for some sort of uh, uh, work to be done by the Department of Health to get some regulations put in place. Uh, around this, uh, and, and also, Mr. Hanna, could yes. you tell us like where yes, you're from please. or who you're representing? Because, yeah. Madam Chair, um, I'm simply a uh, citizen lobbyist. Uh, I've been involved with cannabis law reform in Minnesota for about a decade. Uh, I yeah. do uh, work in collaboration with Sensible Change Minnesota, and uh, I was a caregiver in the medical cannabis program for about a year. Uh, this is my colleague, Marin Schroeder. Uh, and I believe that she might be able to answer your question a little bit more accurately than myself. All right. Um, so I'm sorry, I missed the question. Could somebody repeat what was the question that was asked? Madam Chair, was, uh, months, and I'm sorry. Because of the finance committee here, I was asking if there's already the taxes and regulations set up around raw cannabis or if the laws specifically apply to just the oil and stuff like okay. that. Okay. I think we need to have the department answer that question. I'm sorry. Let's ask if someone from the Department of Health can come down and respond. Um, yeah. Welcome to the committee. Thank you. Um, members, uh, ma uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is Chris Thokas and I am the acting director of the Office of Medical Cannabis for the Minnesota Department of Health. And could you give us your name again? I'm sorry, I missed it. Chris Thokas. Can you spell your last name? T-H-O-L-K-E-S. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so there is not currently a tax on the medical cannabis, um, so there wouldn't be anything we need to set up there. Um, there would be some lead time. Um, I think we were trying to figure out um, the effective date and how we would um, tackle that. But as far as the tax question, there is no tax on the right. medical cannabis. Thank you, Ms. Thokas. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, it a month and it is thank you, Madam Chair. And, and right. uh, I mean, if we're trying to lower the cost of cannabis, not taxing it uh, would certainly allow the market to compete more. <laughs> I don't think you're ever going to be able to lower the price yeah. below the cartel. So, um, and then my, I guess my concern around this is the <coughs> vaping is popular uh, in our society today, um, and somebody is vaping with raw cannabis, and it's uh, is there any kind of documentation that people would have to have on them to show that they have a medical uh, permit for uh, medical cannabis. Is that, yeah, is that? Well, <laughs> Representative Munson, I, I think that we're, we're not changing, this amendment doesn't change the program. Whatever's in place remains in place. It just okay. adds another form that's available. So, okay. you know, I, we, I, I'm sure that you know, there's a lot more to know about the uh, program, I'm sure, and I'm not an expert on it, but we're, we're right now just considering the amendment. So we're, I don't think that's changing any of that. Okay. Representative Hamilton. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and, and you're right. And, and I'll just read the uh, lines uh, 1.10 and 1.11. Vaporized delivery method with use of liquid, oil, or uh, raw cannabis. Yeah. And so, no, we're not changing the program or the delivery method of, um, we're simply adding raw cannabis in, in the three different forms. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, Representative Zerwas. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I guess the one, we're changing the delivery form, but we're also changing uh, 
very significantly the outward appearance of uh, the prescribed and delivered medication. Um, right now, um, everybody that is a part of the health, uh, the Department of Health's medical cannabis program, on their roster, they have a, a prescription uh, for medical cannabis. They go to uh, one of the two manufacturing facilities or their distribution facilities, and they receive a prescription pill bottle or packaging uh, marked as such, and then whether it's cartridges uh, of of for the uh, uh, the vaporizer or uh, marked vials uh, for the drops. Um, one of the things when we first put the bill uh, together, the legislature together, is one of the things that law enforcement was concerned about is if you conducted a traffic stop and there was actual plant material, if there was marijuana leaves or seeds, or um, that there, there needed to be a way to say, well, this marijuana is prescribed by my doctor and, and is medicinal cannabis, but this marijuana is is not, and it's it's uh, it's illegal, it's contraband. And, and so one of the very simple ways that our program delineates from that is, is a patient doesn't get uh, raw cannabis, and so that um, that confusion can never uh, occur. And so um, I guess I'd be interested maybe from uh, one of the manufacturers or from uh, the Department of Health, what the delivery uh, mechanism would be is, are these preloaded uh, marked uh, vials for um, the vaporizing that would have the plant material in it, or would it, or would we literally be sending people out on the street uh, after they go to a dispensary with plastic bags of uh, of cannabis? I, I think there's a pretty significant uh, difference in that, certainly in the enforcement uh, of that, and the enforcement challenges that something like that would uh, provide to uh, peace officers. All right. Well, I don't know if maybe the department could address that. Um, that Ms. Focus, welcome Chair. back, Madam Chair, members, um, Chris Focus. Um, it, I think that we would have to, uh, because we don't currently offer raw cannabis, we would potentially have to go to rules or establish some um, standard operating procedures. Um, states do it in a different ways. They sometimes um, provide the, the cannabis loose, and others have tried um, kind of packaged, um, kind of bubble packaging um, that's preloaded in a, a cartridge. If you do send it out loose, um, you know, it's not guaranteed that it will be used in a vaporizing pen. Um, so I think that we would, um, that is something that we would have to take under consideration and develop uh, procedures and rules for. And um, in, what, just a second, Representative Zerwa. So also I was checking with Mr. Berg. I guess we did get fiscal notes, but apparently, uh, Mr. Berg, maybe you'd like to discuss that. Madam Chair, there are preliminary fiscal notes on each of these three amendments. The, just the conversation we had had is that, I mean, the department has costs for personnel and regulatory structure they'd have to develop and all the costs attendant on changing the program then there are fees raised by this, and in all three cases, the fees are greater than the cost, so. Okay, I just want to clarify that. It says you talk about rulemaking, some of us think, oh, that's gonna cost, but obviously the, the it uh, pays for itself. Representative Zerwas. Well, thank you, Madam Chair, and I guess um, Representative Hamilton's amendment is a three-word change, or a, a three-word addition, and uh, and the deletion of the prohibition of dried leaves or plant form. Um, but despite it being a pretty simple uh, amendment on paper, uh, Madam Chair, with a three-word uh, addition um, and striking some old language, this is clearly from the testimony from the Department of Health a lot more involved in, in that. And I think, um, I think it would suit us uh, to tap the the brakes on this and, and continue discussions about this, but I don't think um, we're probably ready uh, to incorporate this and, and move it forward at this time. There'd be a significant amount of, 
uh, policy, and and I I think um, it would probably behoove us to have a little bit more guidance in uh, for rulemaking on exactly how this would go forward um, as far as how the the plant material would be traded, um, and so. Um, I, I just think that's more involved than a three-word change. Representative Beerman. <clears throat> Madam Chair, thank you. I'd just like to weigh in that um, two of the problems of the medical cannabis program have been distribution and price. And we have a few more dispensaries coming online, it sounds like. But this would be a significant drop in price for a direct way to get the product. And I think that the hurdles to make it uh, work out the details are in the department's uh, purview and would accomplish that second goal for us sooner rather than later. And I'd urge members to vote yes. Thanks. All right. Um, and uh, let me, I'm just going to make a statement and then I'll give Re Representative Hamilton the last word. Um, so I, 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 um, I know that probably not every member would be comfortable with this. I think, um, from my understanding, a lot of states do this. We have the most restrictive medical cannabis uh, program in the nation, from what I'm told. And this is one of the big issues. Other states do this, and the, the world has not fallen apart. In fact, th their programs are cheaper. People are able to get access. And when this was passed initially, and I remember I remember Representative Zerwas, and we had a governor who was very, very reluctant to do this at all. It took a great deal of, of uh, citizen lobbying from families with children with seizures. I remember they parked outside his residence with their strollers and just wouldn't give him any peace until he moved on this. And I think it's proven itself. And obviously, a lot of people in our state are getting relief from this. It is a lot safer than opioids apparently and uh and the problem that we have as representative bierman was saying is is uh one of cost and so i i do not think this is premature i think that we have a department of health that has managed this program as far as as far as i know they've managed it very well and i think it's time to do this as far as um all of the stakeholders and that that argument you know, I remember when this was passed, and I remember that law enforcement didn't like it. And I, I was, frankly, very disappointed with that because I do not believe that law enforcement should be deciding matters of health in this state. And um, I think that we gave, you know, it's good to hear law enforcement's perspective. Obviously, there is a perspective there that needs to be heard. But I would say that we heard it, we restricted our program in response, and I think we've got a lot of experience since then that tells us that this is something we can do and should do. So I support this. Representative Zerwas, I, I, you know, it would be great if we could all agree, but we can't all agree, and that's why we're going to vote in this committee. Representative Hamilton. I couldn't say it any better. Thank you, Madam Chair. I simply ask for everybody's support. All right. With that, all those in favor of the A3 amendment, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. No. The motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. 